but evil lurks in the hearts of men. The shadow knows. <laughs> Once again, your neighborhood blue coal dealer brings you the thrilling adventures of the shadow. The hard and relentless fight of one man against the forces of evil. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcefully to old and young alike that crime does not pay. There is enough anthracite for all the lucky householders whose homes are heated with hard coal. These homes are enjoying healthful warmth in every room. Even though winter winds blow, there is no need to cut down heat or close off rooms in homes heated with dependable hard coal. Yes, sir. When you have a supply of hard coal in your basement, you're the boss of heating your house. You are absolutely independent of any outside service. Be glad you heat with anthracite, the home heating fuel that never fails. And remember, blue coal is the finest anthracite money can buy. The shadow, who aids the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Years ago in the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret. The hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, Death and the Black Fedora. It is a little after nine in the morning. Robert Gardner is just leaving for the office as the phone rings. His wife, Janet, answers it. Hello? This is Dr. Lansdowne, Mrs. Gardner. Oh, good morning, Doctor. Robert seems to be feeling a good deal better today, thanks to you. Uh, Mrs. Gardner, I should like to see you and your husband as soon as possible. Oh, why? Uh, never mind why. That'll wait until later. Meanwhile, I've made plans for you and Robert to dine with me at seven. This evening? At my house. Oh, but I'm afraid we have other plans. Then you'd better change them. Dr. Lansdowne. Believe me, Mrs. Gardner. This is more important. Hello. Hello. Well, of all the... Lansdowne, Janet? Yes. Seems we're having dinner with him, whether we want to or not. Why shouldn't we want to? He's been awfully helpful to me in my, my illness. Yes, of course, dear, but it sounded so upset. All doctors sound a little brusque at times, dear. Yes, I suppose so. Well, I'd better be going. Uh, by the way, where's my hat? Hmm? Which one? The black fedora. Hanging in the closet, probably. No, it isn't. I've looked. Well, perhaps you didn't bring it home. No. Do you mean I I, I just walked off and left it somewhere, my own hat? Robert, please. But, Janet, you I... You mustn't I... excite yourself. Dr. Lansdowne says your nerves are much better. I wonder if he knows. I wonder if it's as simple as nerves. What do you mean? I mean, I'm afraid the doctor's letting me down easily. Oh, darling. No, I mean, it's... The sort of thing has been going on for weeks. It's getting steadily worse. I wonder if I'm not losing my memory altogether, my memory or my mind. Stop it. I won't listen to such talk. All because of an old black fedora. Now, you just forget and buy yourself a new one. I can't very well do that, either. Why not? Well, this illness of mine has cost us money, Janet. Lansdowne's bills have been high. In fact, we are almost broke. But I thought you had lunch with your Uncle Theodore yesterday to borrow some money. I did. Well? He... He said no, Janet. Oh, Robert, how could he? The money's your inheritance. It's my inheritance, but it's in his trust until he dies. And he's completely within his rights. Well, it's all right, dear. We'll get by. How much do we have in the bank? Something like $200, I think. I'm afraid to trust my own memory even about that. You don't have to. Just relax. The bank statement came this morning. Oh, where is it? I put it in with your morning mail, but you forgot to open it. Uh, take a look at it for me. Mm -hmm. I, I want you to know that I, I, I begged, Uncle Theodore. I, I used every argument I can think of. Robert. Yes? There isn't $200 in the account. There's 10000 in 200 What? Look. Here, see for yourself. $10,000? Deposited to the account of Robert Gardner yesterday afternoon. I don't understand. Neither do I. I'll, I'll call the bank. Well, they should have some explanation, but. Janet! What are you staring at? The morning paper. Here on the telephone tape. What about it? This headline Prominent citizen attacked in home yesterday afternoon. Is that anyone we know? Someone we know very well. Uncle Theodore Gardner. Oh, no. Yes. I, I, I'd better phone his house at once. Here, here, finish reading the article. 
well-known retired broker suffered skull injury. Number, please. I, I want uh, Lysengate 29050. Theodore Gardner was brutally attacked in his home at number 2 Burlington Street at a little after 12 a.m. yesterday. Dr. John Lansdowne, the family physician, who arrived on the scene shortly after the attack, gave the following details to the press. Hello, the Gardner residence. I, I'd like to speak to Theodore Gardner, please. Who is this? This is nephew, Robert. Will you ask my uncle to come to the phone, please? I'm afraid he can't do that. Why not? Because, young man, he's dead. What? This is the superintendent of the building. Your uncle passed away at 5.30 this morning as a result of the beating he took yesterday. Hello? Hello? Robert, what's wrong? Finish reading that article. What? I... Finish reading it, Janet. The elderly man was discovered in his drawing room by his physician. He'd been struck repeatedly with a pair of... Heavy brass fire tongs. Motive was obviously robbery as it was revealed that cash was missing from the safe to the account of... Go on. Go on. To the amount of $10,000. That's what it says, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Yes. The exact amount deposited in my account yesterday. Stop it. Stop it. You didn't. I don't know. Think. Can't you remember? Remember. Remember. How can I trust anything I remember? What's that? I'll see. Hello? Mr. Robert Gardner? Robert Gardner speaking. Uh, my name is Squires. I have a little business at 241 West 9th Street. And I'd appreciate your trade, Mr. Gardner. You'll have to call another I'm time. I'm in the fancy dress business, Mr. Gardner. The Gaiety Masquerade costume company. Look, I don't want any costume. But you will, Mr. Gardner. You'll need a shroud. If you're not here in the next 30 minutes... <laughs> Is this, is this the Gaiety Masquerade Costume Company? Yes, sir. And we've got every little thing here for a good time. Masks, wigs, costumes, finest in town and cheap. Now, you look at this clown I suit. I don't want... Too fancy, huh? Now, how about this pirate outfit? He looks like You don't understand. Maybe for I... a gentleman like yourself, this would fill the bell. A British morning coat? I'm not interested. Wait till you see the hat that goes with it. There. I tell you, I don't... Where did you get that? A black fedora. Only slightly worn. The whole outfit is yours, Mr. Gardner, at the special price of $50,000. $50,000? Sounds a little high, but you're not only buying the costume, Gardner. You're buying a lot of silence. Silence? You left this hat at your uncle's house yesterday. And you killed him. Who? Who told you that? A gentleman who saw you in action. A Dr. Lansdowne. Lansdowne? Who was in the entrance hall at your uncle's house when you came out of the drawing room with $10,000 in your hand and blood on your shirt front. No! You can deliver the 50 grand when you get to Lansdowne's house tonight. But uh, I haven't got $50,000. Lansdowne is expecting you and your wife at 7 o'clock, Mr. Gardner. If you bring along the 50 grand, he'll be glad to talk business. And if not? He'll be glad to talk. <laughs> Late, are we, Lamont? Oh, right on time, Margaret. Good. Dr. Lansdowne said 7 o'clock. Hmm, who else is going to be there? Oh, just another couple. Gardner, I believe their name is. Uh, Janet, Robert Gardner. Oh. I'll ring. You know, darling, I've decided I like your new hairdo. Oh, thanks. Bit of an experiment. Lamont, I'm Miss Lane. Hello, Hello Dr. Lansdowne. Come in, come in. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Gardner just got here. Robert will be along in a minute. Right this way. Uh, Margot, uh, this is Janet Gardner. I don't think you've met. How do you do? How do you do? And Lamont Cranston, Mrs. Gardner. Mrs. Gardner? Delighted, Mr. Cranston. Now then, shall I get us all a drink? Shall he, Lamont? Oh, not for me, thank you. Skipping the beverages? Yes, but I'd like to use your phone if you don't mind. Not at all, by all means. It's right there on the end table. Oh, thank you, very much. What about you, Margot? Just one cocktail before death? Oh, I Hello. don't know. Hello. What's the matter, Lamont? Phone. I'm afraid the line is dead. Dead? Oh, I'm sorry. Someone must have let the extension off the hook in the upstairs library. I'll go and see. Oh, don't bother, please. Don't bother at all. You make yourselves at home. Oh, just as I expected. It's off the hook, all right. Oh, whoever did this? I did, Lansdowne. Partner, 
I thought it might be as good a way as any of attracting your attention. How did you get up here? The, the rear door's latched. I climbed up the vines at the side of the house onto a porch out there. <laughs> well, well, my black English army has finally been put to some use. Though a rather unusual one, I admit. It's a rather unusual situation, Lansdowne. I wanted to see you alone. Frankly, I wanted to see you. I heard you did. As you know, I was not only your uncle's doctor, but his friend. And? And despite certain misgivings, I have every intention of going to the police. Yeah. I see. I have absolute proof in my possession. I have something else in my possession. Gardner, I can't afford to buy your silence, Lansdowne, but I can create it. Put that gun down. So you have every intention of informing the police. I... I won't if you say not to. Really? Gardner, wait. I promise you I won't talk. You think I trust you? You've got to. You've got to listen to me. Do I? I'm afraid he won't answer you, Mr. Cranston. Lamont, is he... Yes. One of the bullets pierced his heart. Oh. Easy, darling. But who could have done this? Who else was in the house? Oh, nobody, except the four of us. Someone else is here now. What's that? And he's standing right in the door. Uh, who are you? My name is Square. And I run the Gaty Costume Company. What happened to Lansdowne? He's dead. Dead? He's been murdered. What? Did you say murdered? Yes. Well, where's Robert Gardner? I haven't seen him. Why? Because I saw him. Not long ago, I showed him a black fedora and told him something. Told him what? I told him that Lansdowne... Uh, Squires! Lansdowne! Oh... We'll return to the shadow in just a moment. Friends, during the recent severe weather, homes, apartment houses, schools, and other public buildings, heated with hard coal, have enjoyed full, healthful, uninterrupted warmth. Regardless of snowstorms, halting highway traffic, or causing power failures, homes and other buildings heated with hand-fired hard coal have been sure of continued heat. That's because enough coal can be stored to carry you right through the severe part of the heating season. Yes, when you have a supply of hard coal in your basement, you have the assurance of a warm and snug home at all times. Now, here is something else. Coal can be just as convenient to burn as any other fuel. With a blue coal temp master on your furnace, all trips to the basement to adjust furnace dampers are eliminated. The temp master automatically adjusts them for you, keeping your home constantly at the healthful temperature you set on the upstairs dial. You'll be glad you heat with dependable hard coal when you discover how little attention your furnace requires with a Temp Master automatic heat regulator. The Blue Coal Temp Master can be installed on any furnace without interrupting the heat in your home. And a Temp Master will save you a lot of coal. Call the nearest Blue Coal dealer tomorrow and ask him to demonstrate the Temp Master in your home. Now, back to the shadow. Margot, Lamont, and Janet Gardner have just found Dr. Lansdowne shot to death in his upstairs library when squires of the Gaiety Costume Company walked in out of nowhere, asked where Robert Gardner was, and was also shot by an unknown assailant. Margot and Lamont have just gone downstairs to phone the police when... Listen. Someone at the front door. I'll get it. What's happened? What's happened? Who are you? I'm Robert Gardner. Oh. I was just coming up the drive and I thought I heard a pistol shot. You did. There have been two murders in the past few minutes. Murders? Yes. Who are you? I'm Lamont Cranston. This is Miss Lane. Robert! It's my wife. Where is she? Upstairs with the victims. No objection to my going up, is there, Mr. Cranston? Not at all, Mr. Gardner. Now then, Margaret, we'd best call the police. It's most peculiar. What is This. Here on the floor. Let me see. What is that? Leaf. Black English ivy. Where'd it come from? Fell from Gardner's overcoat just now as you took it off. What could that mean? Could mean that Gardner didn't just come up the drive, Margot. 
They've been around to the side of this house where this ivy grows up the wall. The second floor porch. You mean you think God... I think it's worth a visit, Margaret. And Sarah. They're both dead, Robert. Man's gone. Have you ever seen him before? Squires, I mean. No. No, never. You're lying to me. Janet. You're only going to need help, Robert. Now, Cranston's clever. Please tell me the truth. There, there are some things it's better not to know too much about, Janet. I see. I'm going downstairs to keep an eye on things. Let's uh, join you a little later. Be careful, Robert. Oh, please be careful. Squires. What are you doing here? How much did you get a chance to tell them? <laughs> Laughter. Where did that come from? It couldn't be them. Men, dead men don't laugh. It's, <laughs> it's happening. It's happening. My mind is going. Robert Gardner. Why did you kill Lansdowne? That voice. What is it? What is it? I am the shadow. Unseen by your eyes, but here beside you to see that justice is done. Why did you kill Lansdowne, Robert Gardner? Let me, let me alone, please. Not until I know the truth. Why did you kill him? Be- because he, he knew I murdered Uncle Theodore. Theodore Gardner? Yes. Lansdowne was going to talk if I didn't give him $50,000. So you killed him in cold blood? Yes. No, no, not exactly. No? But there he is, dead at your feet. I, I don't know what happened. When I faced him, he, he promised to be quiet. He said he wouldn't betray me, and I, I was just beginning to think I wouldn't have to kill him when my, my finger must have slipped. The shot sprang out. Where is the gun? Somewhere on the lawn. What? I, I threw it out of the window, and my excitement is down there somewhere. I see. Listen to me, Gardner. If what you've said is true... It is. It is. And there may be a way to help you. Yes. But meanwhile, if you try to escape, the shadow will find you wherever you hide. <laughs> Where have you been, Mr. Cranston? Out on the lawn. Getting some fresh air? No, looking for something. Looking for something? Yes, for this. You recognize it, Mr. Gardner? Why, why, no, no, I don't. But perhaps you might. It's your husband's revolver. My husband? I don't think you're entirely ignorant of what's been happening, Mrs. Gardner. Though I admire your loyalty to Robert, I ask you not to insult my intelligence. Yes, Mr. Cranston, I do know all about it. Uncle Theodore and all that. Thank you for the honesty. But you don't understand. Robert's been so ill. Practically deranged mentally. There must be some way we can help him. Perhaps. At all events, there's some pretty interesting points about this pistol of his. What do you mean? Well, here, take a look at it. Thanks. Is it loaded? Yes, but there's no reason for you to be afraid of it. But it's a reason for you to be afraid of it, though. What? Put up your hands. Gardner. Put up your hands, Mr. Cranston, and walk. Where are we going? Right here. Land down study. But someone's waiting inside for you. Who? A lovely and terrified Miss Lane. Come on. Easy now, darling. We'll come through this somehow. Not necessarily, but there's the bright side, Mr. Cranston. This little lesson may teach you not to interfere in matters that don't concern you. I doubt it, Mrs. Gardner. It really doesn't matter, though. You'll never live to interfere again. The door's our only chance. What about the window? Lattice with iron. That woman locked the door. There may be a key. Where? I never know where you look. Maybe in the desk. The lawn? Yes? What's this? Let's see. Looks like a legal document. Look. Ran down, didn't it? Let me see that. 
Listen to this. To the authorities. In my capacity as Theodore Gardner's friend and physician, I become familiar with his affairs, and I regret to say that of the 500000 he was holding in trust for his nephew, Robert, he's disposed of the sum of 200000 on his personal expenses. He's not something that Theodore Gardner's been stealing from his nephew's inheritance? Looks like it, Margot. It also means I have the clue to this curious little Chinese puzzle at last. But I don't let it... Madam. Smoke. Thought I smelled smoke. I'm afraid you do smell just that. Come on. Easy. We've got to get out. We'll do our best. What's that? Who's there? Robert Gardner. God! You thought the house was deserted, Gardner. I... I was left behind to do the dirty work. Such as? Setting this place on fire. Leaving us locked in this room, of course. Yes. Is it possible you're finding it hard to do? If, if, if only we could make a deal, Cranston. If only you'd agree not to tell the police about the fact that I killed Dr. Lansdowne. You didn't, Gardner. What? Your gun proves you didn't kill him. How? When I found it on the lawn, the chambers were full. It hadn't been fired. I... I don't understand what happened. Open this door. Maybe I can explain. But, but... Open it, man. All right, now. Tell me, where's Janet? She's gone. What's she doing? Home in half an hour. Was she arranging do? to help me get away. I see. Well, go on. Meet her. But I still want to know. Tell her you... Tell her you've gotten yourself a ticket to Tahiti or someplace that your boat leaves in half an hour. And I think you'll get all the explanations you're looking for. All right, Mr. Creston. I'll do as you say. Good luck, Gardner. Going. You think we should let him go alone? He won't be alone. If he needs help, there'll be someone on hand. The shadow. Police headquarters? Yes. This is Janet Gardner. I'm calling from my home at 825 Terrace Drive. Yes? I want to report two murders that have been committed from 7 o'clock this evening. What? I thought you'd like to know that the man who committed them will arrive at this house within the next five minutes. How do you know? The man happens to be my husband, Mr. Robert Gardner. What? What did you say? Hello? Hello? Hey. Done. Just a moment, Robert, darling. Oh, come in, dear. Janet, I, I just came back to say goodbye. What? I'm leaving, Janet. I'm on my way. Where do you think you're going? Tahiti. My boat leaves in half an hour. You're not going anywhere, Robert. Why not? Because if you take another step, I'll kill you. Janet! Better listen to reason, darling. I can say you tried to escape and I killed you in the struggle. Janet! Then it's true! It's you! What are you talking about? You killed them. Both Lansdowne and Squires. Oh, you're crazy. <laughs> Is he, Janet? What was that? Is he crazy? Oh, <laughs> Somebody else in this room. The shadow. Your husband isn't crazy, Janet. He's perfectly sane. It wasn't he who murdered Squires or Lansdowne. He did, I tell you. He murdered them because they knew he killed his Uncle Theodore. But he didn't kill his Uncle Theodore. I... I didn't. No, Robert. But then who did? <laughs> who did? Nobody did. But he's... He's dead. Is he? Who saw him dead, Robert? Why, I know one, now that I think of it. Exactly. What's more, you'll find the obituary notice in the evening paper. As a matter of fact, Robert, no one was even told he was dead. Except you. Who, who's that? Open the door and see. Robert. Open it. <gasps> Uncle Theodore. Yes, my boy, I heard you were in trouble. Murder, I believe. I've come to help you as best I can. You? But... But you were killed. <laughs> Aye. The voice on the telephone this morning said you were dead. Nonsense, impossible. You must have imagined it, Robert. Your, uh, <clears throat> your nerve, you know. But I heard a voice. I know I did. You did, Robert. You heard the voice of your Uncle Theodore. What was that? It was your voice, Theodore Gardner. You disguised your own voice and announced your death to your nephew. Part of the plot you and Janet worked out together. What are you talking about? You arranged with Janet to play on Robert's nervous illness. To persuade him that his mind had failed and that he'd murdered you. You're crazy. Why would I fall in with such a scheme? To get rid of a husband you didn't love. And for a share of what Uncle Theodore had left of Robert's inheritance. That's not true. It is true, Uncle Theodore. 
You wanted to get rid of Dr. Lansdowne. That was at the bottom of everything. You wanted him out of the way because the doctor knew you were stealing from Robert's inheritance. That's lies. All lies. And you thought if Lansdowne became an eyewitness to Robert's crime, Robert would kill the doctor for you. I, I intended to kill him. He said he was going to the police. You intended to, yes. But Uncle Theodore out on the terrace saw that things weren't going according to schedule and shot Lansdowne himself to make sure. Uncle Theodore killed Lansdowne? And later shot Squires from the same vantage point when he realized that gentleman might renege too. He shot Squires too? Yes, Robert. Your murdered uncle was the one who committed the murders. Whatever you are, you're smart. Too smart. Where are you going? Out that door. Come along, Judge. I wouldn't use that door if I were you. Why not? Open up! Come on, open up. The house is surrounded. Because, as the officer says, the house is surrounded. Surrounded by police that Janet sent to arrest her husband for murder. (laughs) Now let me present Blue Coal's distinguished heating authority... John Barclay. Thank you, Andre Baruch, and good evening, friends. This winter, millions of people are mighty thankful they heat with hard coal. All winter long, they're able to keep their homes at temp- any temperature they please. Yes, when you use hard coal, no one will request that you turn your furnace down to conserve fuel. And now, users of hard coal can have this failure-proof heating automatically controlled, thanks to the Blue Coal Temp Master Heat Regulator. It's like an electric brain on your furnace. The temp master opens and closes the dampers without even a thought on your part. It saves countless steps and saves a lot of coal, too. Modernize your furnace by installing a blue coal temp master and assure yourself of economical, carefree heating comfort. It will pay you to call the nearest blue coal dealer tomorrow for a free demonstration in your own home. I thank you. This story is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. The characters, names, places, and plot are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Again next week, the shadow will demonstrate that... The weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> Next week, same time, same station, your friendly blue coal dealer brings you another strange and thrilling adventure in the shadow's daring battle against the forces of evil. The shadow is presented by the DL&W Coal Company, distributors of blue coal. Lamont Cranston is played by Brett